that uh, whew, I wonder how we'd fare. I wonder how we'd fare, how we'd, how we'd do. Because I know a whole lot of folks that it doesn't even take that much for them to say, why God? God, I can't believe that you'd do this. But we've heard this story, I'm sure, many times. And at least that's what I grew up thinking. You know, people have heard this story many times. And, and they probably have. And, and, and if they've been in a church any sort of way. And man, it, I, I'll just be honest. It's so refreshing to sit in that hospital room this afternoon. And say, have you heard the story of Job? No. All right. I'll have to tell you the short version. You know. I asked him, have you heard the story of Joseph? Who's Joseph? Wow. Well, let me tell you. You got some time? I said, it's a long story. He said, oh, tell it to me, sir. Tell it to me. <laughs> Nurse came in, and uh, so I kind of got quiet. You know, he said, I'm still listening. Keep going. <laughs> I want to hear this story. Well, glory to God. We've, we've, we've probably heard this story a lot of times. And so the, it, it is a story of a man in pain. It's the story of a man that is powerless to control his present or his future. You and I, at least, we, we like to re retain a, 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 an essence of control in our life. It's a story of a man who, by everything that we can see, lost all physical purpose right. for living. For mo by most of our standards. Amen. I've got a good friend that I've been working with quite a bit. And he did tell me uh, here a while back. You know, things are happening in his life. He said, you know, if this happens like this. He said, I think I'm just going to give up. He said, I tried. I just don't know what else to do. I think I'm going to give up. Job had every reason to give up. Lost absolutely everything that you and I could call dear, hold dear. But even with all of that, Job held on to that knowledge. And we read later on in the book, he says, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And all these things, that they were taken uh, or stolen from Job. They were, uh, they were of monetary value. They were of sentimental value. They were... They were, uh, they had intrinsic value as well to in that time and that place. But by the story, we know today that the theft of these things was not the actual goal of Satan, was it? It wasn't the actual goal of Satan at all. If you remember, John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan, by our standards, has already accomplished that goal in the life of Job. Amen. Stolen his wealth, his kids, his livelihood, their buildings, and maybe even jo and even Job's dreams in a way. You know, in Job 19, he says, my hope has been removed like a tree. Amen. He says, I don't have anything left. Yet we know that through the scope of God's word, that Satan's goals were much more selfish in there. He was out to steal Job's faith. He was out to get to kill even Job's ability to trust in God and give glory in his life. Amen. He was out to destroy Job's testimony and ultimately give himself a form of worship right. as Job would curse God and die. Mm -hmm. But that was not the case. Amen. So I just want you to recognize tonight that there was in this story, there was a robbery in progress. There was a robbery in progress. Amen. Satan's goals have not changed in our day. And he's still after our soul. Yes, amen. We talk about Job's faith. We talk about a lot of good things. Uh, amen. But in the end, the goal is still the same. It's you and I. Right. It's for you and I. Amen. To go be with him in that place of eternal torment. Amen. That warning in Jeremiah 49 verse 2 says... Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabah of the Ammonites, and it shall be a desolate heap, and her daughters shall be burned with fire, and then shall Israel be heir unto them that were his heirs, saith the Lord. Amen. I, and I, I would like to think that in a lot of places, amen, in this, uh, in this, in this world, 
that the warning has been heard, that it's went out, that the alarm is sounded. Amen. Well, sometimes it's a neighbor that gives the call. You know, sometimes it's an accident on a motor on a motorbike. Amen. Motorcycle. Amen. That gives the call. Amen. The assemblies of, of God tells. Uh, uh, man, well, they're not the assemblies of God, but a man was telling a story about the assemblies of God. He said there was an older man that was at one of their camp meetings quite a few years ago. And they warned him, the, uh, uh, that old preacher listened to everything they were talking about. And as he was sitting around the table, one of the, a couple of days into that meeting, some of the folks sat down and talked to him. He was of an older denomination that, that is now pretty much no more and gone. But um, he, he was sitting there, talk, he was talking to some of those preachers. And he began to warn them. He said, you know what? Uh, he said, the things that you and your ministers and your, your leaders are talking about, compromising on, the things you're talking about giving into are the same things that my denomination gave in to years ago. And he gave them a warning. He said, if you ask me, if you continue down the road you're going on, you'll lose out. Amen, you're going to lose it. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what you think of the Assemblies of God. I've got a lot of good people involved. Uh, Brother James Snow that was here is the ministers of the Assemblies of God, so I mean no disrespect at all. But the organization at its core, at its top, has left most of what they believe, but there's a few good men and a few good churches, uh, amen, that are following that. But sometimes the alarm system goes off and, and the Holy Ghost warns us to pray, amen. Uh, there have been times, amen, when God has woken me up, amen. But uh, I'm, I'm going to toot that horn, but I do want you to know that God does wake people up. Uh, God does call for uh, for a man of God or a woman of God to pray for you, uh, amen, in your time of need. They may not know you're even, they're even praying for you. Amen. Let me just retell one of Brother Snow's stories as he was, he was talking and he pastored in Arkansas. He may not even have told this. I think he told it in the church. I'm not sure. But anyway, he was telling a story about, he said, God laid on my heart. He said, Lord, talk to me and told me that God wanted to reach out to the black community. But that, in that, in that area, he said, the town I was in was about 80% uh, black in, in color. And he said, so he, he told me that I wasn't going to be able to reach him but that he was going to raise up a man to do so. Right. He said, so I, I began to pray for that man. And many nights I woke up in the middle of the night feeling an urge and a need to pray for that man. How about quite a few years later, I don't remember exactly how many years, God gave him a dream and he saw this man. Uh, actually, that's two different stories. I'm getting too mixed up. Anyway, he saw in the newspaper... He saw this, he saw a picture of this man that somebody had given this big building to. God said, that's the man. And he went down and met him and got to pray with him. You just don't know who God has got on your watch. Amen. You just don't know who's God, who God has got on your watch. Amen. But what we do need to be aware of tonight is that there is an alarm going forth uh, and there is a robbery in progress. Amen. That enemy's trying to work on my soul. He's trying to work on your soul. He's trying to affect it in any way he possibly can. He's trying to get a hold of the people of God. He doesn't want you to succeed. He doesn't want you to, to get that prayer life firmly grounded. He doesn't want you to get a hold, amen, if, you can, if we can put it this way, of the blessings of God and begin to share them with the world. Amen. He doesn't want us to get on fire for God. He doesn't want you to go to heaven. That's just the bottom line of it all. Amen. There is a robbery in progress tonight. But there is also a weapon. We're not alone. Glory to God. I was down in South Arkansas and I heard a heard a sto- uh, heard a, a, an old man of God there preaching. At a, at a meeting and he began to he said you know what uh, he said uh, uh, if you're in this place and, and the devil's not going to like it he said <laughs> he said the devil's not going to like it uh, and you may wish that God didn't wake me up this morning you're going to wish God didn't wake me up this morning he said but I had a dream last night he said oh, I, I saw an angel and there was something moving out there in the dark and God gave me a weapon. 
And he said, I'm here to fight the enemy this morning. Now you may think that as a, it, it was kind of comical for me at the time. But as that man began to preach, I began to realize God really did give him a weapon. God wrenched him a weapon as he said. Amen. But we're not without a weapon in this house. Amen. We're not without a weapon. Amen. Where we're at, we're not without a defense. First of all, there's the word of God. Amen. I, I'm here to tell you tonight that I don't really believe, uh, amen, that we can just summon it up. I've said it a hundred times that uh, you can't just quote enough scriptures or tell enough stories for our hearts to get full enough for us to make it on our own. Uh, it just doesn't happen that way. Uh, amen. But we can go to this word of God uh, and we can begin to claim the promises that are in it. Uh, we can begin to trust the Lord. Uh, we can begin to pray. Uh, amen. Until God changes things. Uh, amen. I, I can, uh, there's a song I wrote by a friend of mine, uh, Nathan Marquis out in Maryland. Uh, he says, uh, he wrote this song. He says, my family shows no interest. My child has grown so cold. Uh, amen. I've tried my best to reach them, but their hearts just seem so hard. What can I do uh, to bring them back to you? The uh, family's lost and dying, and my words just aren't getting through. Uh, amen. And he wrote this uh, in, in despair. Amen. But as God began to come in, uh, uh, began to help him, uh, he began to write the words, I can pray. Until the walls come down. Uh, until there's healing all around. Uh, there's something I can do. Amen. I still believe that tonight. Amen. That God, uh, amen, through His power, amen, uh, has given us this weapon of prayer. Uh, he's given us the Word of God. Uh, he's given us, amen, His name. Amen. You don't have to be defeated. There is the name of Jesus. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, Praise be to God. Who, uh, who causes us to triumph always and everything. Yeah, in, in 2 Corinthians, um, uh, I want to say, one of the first six chapters, he also says again, uh, thanks be to the Lord. Uh, uh, I'm paraphrasing tonight, but he says, who, give, who always giveth us the victory. Amen. There is the power in the name of Jesus. Uh, there's an old brother by the name of Kenny Brand. Uh, um, and he, he's a wonderful man. I, I enjoyed him. Uh, even as a young child, he could play that piano. He'd play the piano and sing. And, and uh, just a wonderful man. Uh, one night he was down on the streets uh, of, of St. Louis, I do believe it was. And, and uh, a man jumped out of the alleyway and pointed a gun in his head uh, and said, give me all your money or I'm going to shoot you. And I don't know what his goal was, but Brother Brand says, Brother Brand said, I raised my hand, I said, in the name of Jesus, drop that weapon. Or let it not fire. Something like that. I don't know. Click. Jam. The guy looked at it like he was crazy. Like, what in the world? My other, uh, some of my friends were down in Cincinnati, Ohio. They were dating. They're married now, but they were dating at the time. They were down on the streets of Cincinnati, uh, and they were just kind of walking in some pretty parts of town. And a group of men jumped out uh, and and, uh, and, and held, got them captive. They took their wallets. And he didn't have anything. She had like a hundred bucks or something. They they took it uh, and they're standing there. They, they they're down on their knees. They've got guns to their heads, uh, and uh, and so they began to walk away. You know, and the, the guy's like, "What do you mean do with them?" Guy with the gun with their head said, What are you going to do with them? He's sitting there praying, Oh God, this is it. Mm-hmm. That man looks over his shoulder and said, Just shoot him. Just shoot him. And that guy just kind of, What? Right here in the middle of the street? Turned around and walked away. <laughs> well, Old, brother, old preacher by the name of Neil Bridges. Brother Neil Bridges was down, was down in the area's pastor at the time, and there was some brothers coming by that uh, by this woman's house, and they were there to pray for her. The reason being is because the family called and they said this woman's got a demon. He's got demons. You know, they called these pastors to come in and pray. They prayed all day and they prayed till one or two o'clock in the morning. That woman was just uh, uh, throwing them off, essentially. 
And, uh, and so finally they didn't know what else to do. Pick up the phone. Brother Neil was several hours away. And they said, they said Brother Bridges, Pastor Bridges. Uh,